Hi, everyone, and welcome to another really special uh, Talking Song episode. We have Sarah with us. Welcome. Hi, thank you. <laughs> Grateful to be here. So glad you're here. And um, for m many of you uh, actually have read uh, Sarah's essay, which we featured in. I read it one time. I sent it as a newsletter. So uh, this, this is the Sarah who wrote that wonderful essay. And with that said, um, we're grateful to hear a little bit of your story. So without further ado, like, tell us uh, how did it all start? Um, yeah, I, um, I think at the time it felt like it came out of nowhere. Um, but looking back, I can see that I had stress building my life. Um, and we'd all been through pandemic and my way of getting through was to work, work, work. And, um, I'd helped my dad through heart surgery and had a niece living with me on and off. And I started to get tinnitus for a couple months. I think that, um, was probably my tipping point. <laughs> I got really obsessed with it. It reminded me of an injury I'd had when I was younger. And um, then we had a bunch of fireworks for July 4th in our neighborhood and um, the dog was unhappy. I wasn't sleeping. And then all of a sudden I stopped sleeping. So it's about, it, I think about a week or five days of, of what felt like no sleep. And, and this, by the way, this is, uh, we're now in early 2023. So is this, uh, July of last year, 2022? Yeah, this past July. Yes. So that, yeah, so you had the firework and the, the tinnitus and all this, and you, you didn't <laughs> sleep one night. Is that, that something like that happened? Yeah. And I, I never experienced trouble sleeping before. You know, I think I could probably count on one hand the number of times I pulled an all nighter for college or work. <laughs> it's just, it was really um, unusual. And um, I kept thinking I would sleep again I would sleep again um but it, the problem didn't go away so I called my health care plan <laughs> and, and by the um, way, before, before we go yeah. to that call yeah. like uh how many nights was it that you didn't sleep and was it like you were completely awake those nights or was it kind of like on and off like choppy sleep I felt like I was completely awake for I think it was like at least five nights but oh, yeah. I don't know I mean now I can see how sleep is weird <laughs> and um <laughs> you can think you're not sleeping when you are kind of drifting out on and off. So um, it felt like I wasn't sleeping for, for several nights. Um, and I was you know, trying to nap during the day and I just, yeah, I, I was in wonderland. I didn't know what was happening. Um, it really was a scary experience. I was going to ask about that. Was it, it was not only puzzling, it, you were starting to get worried at this point. Yeah. I thought something was either, really wrong with me physically or psychologically. And I think that just got worse when I started asking for help. Which which leads to, so after those five nights, you thought, you basically thought you were up the whole night, you were going to get scared. You called your healthcare plan, what happened? <laughs> and then I was prescribed um, Ativan, um, which was for the tinnitus, the anxiety and the sleep. Um, and um, when I took that, I, I didn't sleep very much. Um, I was getting, you know, a couple hours here and there. Um, and then finally, when I was able to get an appointment with my, um, with my doctor, she kept me on the prescription and um, also put me on Prozac. So, um, yeah, <laughs> but I didn't hear anywhere along the way, um, your body will get the sleep it needs. <laughs> You're okay. <laughs> I heard oh, this is a problem. Um, I, I was put in a CBTI program through my healthcare provider that was really stressful. Um, and I went to alternative practitioners too. I, um, I saw a therapist, I saw a chiropractor, acupuncture, everything. And nobody I talked with had ever worked with somebody who had um, that kind of insomnia, sudden insomnia. Um, and yeah, <laughs> That's and, and now, uh, if we take, take a look at these pieces, kind of one by one, if you will, like, uh, the fir fir first time you called your healthcare plan, was it, uh, did you see someone or was it, or what was that? Was it like, yeah. Yeah. It's still, um, this, so I'm, my husband's a teacher and we're in a big healthcare plan in, in our area. And, um, a lot of it is still done remotely and they're really encouraging that. Um, so it was through an advice nurse. So, so what were you, um, was there, were they basically saying like, oh, this sounds 
all, all sounds like anxiety here. Take this pill. Or what was was the explanation given? Or what was the what was the conversation like? If there was any. Um, I think the emergency doctor that I talked to on the phone just listened and prescribed. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, there wasn't, I mean, at that time, who knows if what I was hearing, I wasn't probably able to listen right. to that much information, but I didn't ever feel comforted <laughs> that there was a way through for sure that didn't involve drugs. Totally. And by the way, for anyone listening here, like, uh, if anything I say, it sounds like it's critical of like doctors or healthcare or something like that. It's, it's not criticism of anyone. It's just that I think, you know, healthcare providers are just not educated uh, in, in these inner struggles we have in, in a way that makes, makes it meaningful. So just want to sneak that in there. And then you saw your regular doctor and I, it sounds like it was sort of the same. They said, okay, uh, seems like this is a struggle for you. Like uh, try this medication didn't really help. And uh, it, or, or what happened really? Was it like, did you find that you slept a little easier or nothing really changed at all? Or what was it like? I slept. Um, so when I was on Ativan, I slept a handful of hours, not much. Um, usually I think it was like two or three, um, sometimes a little bit more and a lot of nights, nothing. And I also was really anxious about being, I mean, you only have to do like a quick internet search to get really worried about being on this stuff. Um, and I don't take, you know, I don't take drugs if I don't have to. So, um, yeah, I didn't want to be on it. I, I was, that did keep me looking for options. Um, also the CBTI program, I didn't. Oh, yeah. tell, me, tell, tell us about that. What was that like? I, it was very stressful. <laughs> and I think intuitively I knew that it was just adding to my stress to track the hours of sleep, to be really concerned about the temperature. I mean, there's no way in summer here to get the room to 65 degrees, <laughs> you know, and there was, it was a lot of obsession with that. Um, I also, I was in a group plan and it, I also felt like the people there didn't have the, quite the same experience as I was having, like something so severe out of nowhere. It was more like I'm having trouble sleeping over time. And I think the method may work for, for somebody who's wired a little bit differently, but this was, this was a new situation for me. Totally good. And was it also like a, a was it like a group uh, online as well? Or was it, it was online? Group? Yeah, it was all remote. All right. And they were basically telling you to like track your sleep and mm -hmm. calculate the sleep efficiency. Avoid and... the bed. That one too. I, I couldn't handle the, you know, avoiding the bed, not getting in bed until, I mean, the amount of I was sleeping, I wasn't supposed to get in bed until midnight and we get up at five in our household and yeah, it just was, it seemed really confusing to me. Uh -huh. so I didn't stay in it. And, and I kept looking, I'm really glad I was very, very motivated to get out of the situation I was in. I kept looking for other options. And, be, and before we get to like you finding like our school and all this, like you also, you know, you went to acupuncture and what else? A chiropractor, a health food store, you know, I, I tried everything that I could. I read books that I could find easily. Um, yeah, I was I was really really motivated to find a solution. And meanwhile, I want to ask, mm -hmm. uh, how how did it like your day to day work, etc.? How did you function? Probably about a week or two in, I um, so I had my own own business, so I had some flexibility, but I had a lot of work in the queue. Um, and a week or two, probably two weeks in, I felt like I couldn't manage everything. So I had to let a few big projects go. Um, and my level of anxiety, I think, just kind of rose and rose with um, taking the meds and still not being able to sleep. So I had never experienced anxiety like that. I, um, you know, was consumed with thinking about sleep, even when I was trying to get through my day. Um, and, and, you know, bedtime was so stressful and being in bed at night was stressful. <laughs> so I moved to the guest room out of the bedroom with my husband. Um, yeah, that totally get it. So you, you, you know, you didn't completely stop working, but you, 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 you reduced your workload. You moved out of the bedroom, you were taking the medication, you're still not seeing things change. And, and then, uh, and then what happened next? Yeah, what happened next in the story, if you will? Okay. Um, 
So by August, I think sometime in August, I found um, Beth Kendall's website. Oh, yeah. Um, and I read her post. I loved her content. I emailed her and she wasn't taking um, new coaching clients because she was developing a program, but she referred me to Michelle. So I talked with Michelle in August and she was lovely and very helpful. Um, I wasn't sure I wanted to be in a group program. I didn't know what that would be like, um, but by uh, early September, I was ready to join. So I signed up for the, the insomnia immunity program. Very, very well. And, and from, um, you know, after finding Beth and Michelle, had you started like tuning into our podcast and YouTube channel? And right. When I talked to, well, when Beth pointed me there, I looked at your YouTube channel um, and watched a handful of videos, um, read your books, which were helpful. Um, yeah. Exactly. All right. And, and did you have a, did you do a call with Michelle or? I did yeah. a one-on-one -on -one with Michelle. I think I might've done two with her yes. initially. And then you joined. And All then right. I joined. Yeah. Very, very well. And, uh, and then, yeah, take it from there. Like you joined the program, you know, you, you had been a little bit, um, you know, hesitant about the group approach, but what was it like when you joined? Oh, it was, it was wonderful. I'm so glad I found it. Um, you know, I think every part of the program now looking back, on the other side um, makes so much sense. The community aspect is wonderful because you see people who are at every stage and having any kind of experience. So you kind of know that whatever you go through is normal. Um, the drop-ins and the coaching approach, the approaches of both you and Michelle are excellent. Um, even the, the classes I know initially thinking, the pacing seems really slow. I wanna figure this all out right now. Um, I want all the answers, but it does make sense how it's kind of fed to you over time because um, the process to get, to get through this does take a long time. It did um, for me. Well, I'm, I'm so glad you found it helpful right from the start. And I guess the, um, the group approach was, it, it wasn't that, that difficult for you. You actually found it helpful, if anything. I loved it. I know. <laughs> I, <laughs> I know from the first drop-in call that I had, you know, where somebody said, well, you know, just with just hearing what other people's experiences were kind of reflected in where I was, um, was so helpful. And to see people who are a few steps ahead. Um, yeah, it was lovely. All right. And now this said though, like, you know, I was like to point out, even if you have like really nice education, you have, uh, yes. you know, <laughs> other people that are, you know, you know, you have the group support, you have coaching and, and all this, not, not this, it's not easy. So, so with that said, like what, what was kind of the process uh, like for you? What maybe some key moments, key, you know, you know, tell us a little bit what happened next. Yeah. Um, so I, I tapered off my, the meds in September um, and um, I wasn't sleeping much. And I feel like I, I understood theoretically everything. I think I read your books several times, um, watched the classes several times, you know, was on Slack all the time. And I understood, but I think I still had to experience it, um, getting off the drugs and going, you know, several weeks without very much sleep. Um, just to know that by that time, I felt like I had my feet under me. I started taking on more work. I, um, I kind of understood that it was a little bit of a game with myself to like have a great day, even if I didn't sleep, um, to make nights more fun. I mean, that was, for me, that was a big learning curve was, um, I had so much anxiety at night and I, I used, um, you know, coach Michelle has a great, great recommendations and practice for welcoming in the anxiety. And I really worked with that. And then when I felt like I had kind of gotten through most of the anxiety at night, I remember like the first night being very intentional about like having a great novel to read and having cheesy popcorn and <laughs> having what I call the party in the middle of the night when I couldn't sleep. Um, and then a couple nights, you know, getting up and doing some art. So making nights fun, um, that was a real challenge. But I think that was, I think when I was able to do that, then sleep started to get more normal pretty soon after that. Yes. And, and did you, I want to ask you this, um, I remember that you were, um, you know, tapering off the medication, which is, 
you know, can be like you know, somewhat of an extra challenge because we're basically removing something we, you know, that's been a safety blanket for us, you know, and et cetera. And, and you, you know, not surprisingly, you still didn't sleep much as this was happening. But um, was there a difference in, uh, you know, I want to say like when we don't sleep and we're completely confused and puzzled, it can be more triggering than when we understand sort of what's going on. Did you find that it was a little different not sleeping when you were more educated than not? Definitely. I mean, I remember the week being off of the meds fully feeling like it was the first time I could think clearly. I think that was about the anxiety of the meds, you know, you know, maybe also kind of being in a fog from them. Um, but I remember at that time saying, okay, I'm going to ready to, I'm ready to take on a few more projects. I'm ready to be a little bit more productive. <laughs> very nice. But I still, at that point was sleeping as little as before, which really wasn't very much. I, I know I remember for, you know, it was like probably two hours was a lot. It would seem like two hours. And I would wake up and I'd say, is this what people mean when they talk about insomnia? Because how do you how do you get by on two hours a night? But you do <laughs> somehow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm just you, 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 you. I hear that so many times. Like, how do people get by on it? And then it's sort of like I, I often refer them to to stories like yours, which is like, well, somehow we do. Somehow we find some resource within us. And but anyways, um, very nice and. I want, to, I want to ask you something. Uh, in actually, like this week's uh, dropping class, somebody said, uh, uh, she said, like, oh, insomnia, sort of like when it when it fades out or goes away, it, there's no fanfare, there's no like, you know, no, no not, not, it's sort of like it's, it slips out the back door. And she said, I think I might have read this from Sarah's essay, but I don't know. Did, did you say that? Was that in your essay? Or I did you say that sometime? So, but I do know, um, you know, it happens so gradually. Um, and also, you know, part of your teaching is um, to not celebrate the nights when you're getting more sleep. So kind of, you know, acknowledging it, but not having a party about it <laughs> is, um, I think it is helpful that it just come, yeah, and it does come back to normal. Even, I know the last piece of the puzzle for me was moving back to the bedroom, even though that was the thing I was most worried about the whole time was being in the guest room. And I, at some point, I just really let myself off the hook with it. And I don't, I didn't move back until December. Um, and when I did, it was no big deal. It was, you know, there wasn't an adjustment period at all. It was just, we had company coming. I slept in there and then I was there. <laughs> oh, nice. So, in, but I, you know, it really is. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go, you go ahead. And then I have a question. Oh, no, I mean, I, the whole thing is, for me it was about, and, and, you know, I think this is your approach is just about being okay with whatever happens. And so when you get to that point where you're just okay with whatever, yeah, you're not paying attention to any, any day in particular, right? <laughs> Absolutely. hundred percent. And uh, I just want to stay a little bit longer on the, like, uh, you, letting yourself off the hook. Uh, because I think this helps so many people who are have feel conflicted about whatever it is, taking a supplement, taking medication, sleeping on a couch, that um, something that we often teach can be really helpful is basically saying, yeah, this is what I'm doing now. And I can look at it as, you know, self-care and just being kind to myself and not blaming myself for it or judging myself for it. And was that what you meant with uh, letting yourself? Yes. Yeah. It, yeah. It was something I was so worried about for the first few months. <laughs> um, and I felt like I pressure. Um, and when I stopped having that pressure and just saying, whatever it is, what it is for now, um, then, you know, then I, I eventually did move back and it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. I'm so, I'm so glad you, we, we got a chance to hear this because it's, it so echoes what I think, which is that oftentimes when, when, when we teach on like, you can, you can just, uh, don't, you know, let, let it happen. Don't criticize yourself for this. Then a natural reaction for someone is like, well, then it's never going to change. If I, if I make myself say it's okay to sleep on the couch, then I'm going to sleep there forever. But it actually is the opposite. Like when the pressure is off and it doesn't matter, it's like it, it, what we want to happen sort of happens easily, right? Right. Yeah, I think so. All right. And um, so December you moved back and that was kind of like maybe the last piece of the puzzle, if you will. And where are we now in January? So how, how have things been from December and on? Yeah. Um, 
good. It's been a couple months of, of normal, more normal sleep. Um, every once in a while I'll have a wonky night, nothing like it was. Um, and I think I'm still processing, you know, a little bit of fear here and there. Um, I, um, fourth or not the fourth July, but, um, January 1st, we had a lot of fireworks in our neighborhood again. Um, at least that's what my husband said, cause I slept through it. So <laughs> that to me felt like kind of a nice bookend. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. And I want to ask you to, uh, maybe to my two, which has become my two, like last questions here. One is, um, oh yeah. Has this, um, you know, going through this uh, struggle with insomnia and, 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 you know, and, and, lo- and learning things, ha- has that been helpful in other areas of life? Yeah, I, I definitely think so. And this is, you know, the things that you've been talking about your newsletter this past week really resonated with me because it's, this has made me curious about even the small patterns in my life um, the kind of emotional mental habits that I can get into. Um, I don't know. It's just made me curious if I can approach those with the same practice of, you know, welcoming in. And I know how you, you say too, it sounds like there's kind of like fear at the root of these fear or avoidance of some emotion at the root of these kind of small habits that we get into. Um, so by being with that, being, by being open to experience that, can I, um, no, you know, it's not like I'm, I, I want to not have to experience suffering. I think we all do. So it's not that, but it's, can I, can I avoid the next step that creates like the habit or the pattern? Exactly. Very well. And then if you, um, I want to say this one, if you could, um, you know, go back to when it was really intense and you could say something to yourself, what would you pick? <laughs> um, I wonder where I was at the very beginning, if I would have been able to hear anything. Um, like, I think I had to go through, you know, once, once that initial fear was there, I think I had to unravel it over time. Um, you know, I wish I found your program earlier, you know, probably could have saved me a month. <laughs> um, but I had a lot I had to, to unravel. Um, maybe I, if I'd heard, early on, um, you know, the body gets the sleep it needs. And, um, you know, if you can be okay with what's happening, you know, you'll get through this faster. Maybe that would have been helpful. All right. Very, very nice. And just one last thing came to me. I I think I, I remember you mentioning that you were, were you, interested in like Buddhist philosophy in the past or you, or you have... well, I had, I've always been a you know big meditator and yeah, I've, I've definitely explored a lot of things. And I, I think I had a call with Michelle and I remember asking her, I can't meditate anymore. Is this normal? <laughs> you know, when you're so worked up. Yeah. 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 Totally get it. Did, did, uh, did that ever, did meditation turn into sleep effort at, at some point for you or not? Really? Yeah, for sure. I tried every sleep meditation I could initially. Yeah. I was listening to things for half the night. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that was amazing. Thanks so much for sharing the story with us, Sarah. And, um, uh, just, yeah, thanks so much. Be in touch and, uh, so, so nice having you. Thank you. All right. Bye everyone.